Mm, all right, so number um, six, we have the function f of x, where we have that it's equal to 2x minus 1 is this times x plus 1. We have to find which of the following is the equation for the line tangent to the graph of f, where the point is x equals 1. Um, so the idea, well, like, so first off, equation of a line, let's, let's go with the y equals mx plus b form. That's what it seems their answer is going to be in that form. And then the slope of this tangent line is the derivative of f of x. But since we want to find it at a specific value where x equals 1, we want to find f prime of 1. So first, let's find what the derivative is. So the derivative would be you know, using, this is going to be product rule and chain rule. So we're going to first take the derivative of this group using power rule and times the derivative of the inside using chain rule times 2 times x plus 1 plus, let's go down here, plus now we hold the first group, the 2x minus 1 to the fifth as itself times the derivative of x plus 1, which is just 1. Now we find what the derivative's value is when x equals 1. So we just plug 1 into here for x and evaluate. So 5 times 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is just 1. 1 to the fourth times 2. 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2 minus 1 to the fifth. So 1 to the fifth times 1. And this would just be equal to 5, 20, 21. Okay, so now we have our equation with the slope of 21. So now we need to find the value of the y-intercept, so b. And we know where x, we know that x is 1 at that point. So we can find y by plugging in x equals 1 into this into this into the first equation don't plug it into the derivative so y would be 2 minus 1 to the fifth or just or just you know 1 times 1 plus 1 so times 2 so 1 times 2 so we get 2 so it goes through the point 1 comma 2 so we use that to find the y-intercept. And then b would then be 9 or negative 19. And so our equation for the tangent line would be y equals 21x minus 19. Now we can just, just use this equation to find um, the value. Oh, no, we don't have to find. Oh, we, we, this, this is all we got to do. OK. And that's our answer. The answer would be B. Right, number seven. Yeah, there's integral. And we just have to basically integrate it. And let's remember U substitution. U, let's make U the square root of X. And that's the same as X to the one half power. So DU would then be one half X to the negative one half DX. We almost have that. What we have is just x to the negative 1 half. So we're going to get rid of this 1 half, multiplying both sides by 2. We have 2 du equals x to the negative 1 half. Now, that's the same as this 1 over the square root of x dx. So now this is just in that equation. So we can rewrite our integral as 2 times the integral of e to the u du. I just factor out the two right at this point just because it will keep it. It's going to be factored. It's, it's a constant, constant coefficient. And then the antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u. So it's just 2 e to the u plus c. And resubstituting the square root of x for u, we get 2 e to the square root of x plus c. And so our answer is A.
All right, eight, we have this function that's continuous on the closed interval, zero to six, and has values in this table below, or this table above. We have the trapezoidal approximation from zero to six to, with three subintervals of equal length. So the three subintervals are each two, and that it's equal to 52. What's the value of K? So um, remember that the area of a, so we have three trapezoids here. So let me actually just draw it. The visual always helps understand this better. So we have a point at zero four, another point at two K. You don't know what K is, but let's just say, let's just make it like above it. Let's K could be less than four, it could be above four, so it's a mystery. Let's just, but it's gonna have a Y value of K when X is two and then four, eight and then 612. So what we do is we make trapezoids, three of them to approximate this integral. So we just have to find the area of each of these. So, so we know that 52 is equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3. Now the area of each of those trapezoids, they all each have a width of two. That width is the height. And the area of a trapezoid in general is, is, is the average of the bases. So if you remember B1 plus B2 over two times the height. So let's, 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 let's put this all together now. 52, that they all have a height of two. So we can just write, let's put two in the front. Two times, this is base one, that's base two. So this will be four plus K over two. The second one still has a height of two times K plus eight over two plus still has a height of two, so plus two times eight plus 12 over two. So now we just solve for K using algebra. These, all the twos cancel. So you really have 52 equals four plus K plus K plus eight plus 20. Going back over here, 52 equals 20, 32 plus 2K. Solving this, taking away 32, K will then be 10. So the answer is D. Right, problem nine. We have a particle that moves along the x-axis so that at any time t more than zero, its velocity is given by this, four minus six t squared. As the particle is at position x equals seven at time t equals one, what's the position of the particle at times t equals two? So the key here is to recognize that velocity is a derivative of position that means position is the antiderivative of velocity. So when you integrate velocity, you can get the um, position function. So if we integrate the velocity function from zero to, from let's go one to two, using fundamental theorem of calculus, this will be equal to S of two minus S of one. So from here, we can just solve using algebra. But let's go, so let's, let's, let's go ahead, let's do it then. So then I go from one to two of four minus six T squared DT. That would be equal to four T minus six T cubed or six T, yeah, six T cubed over three. That just becomes two. And we're going to evaluate from, again, 1 to 2. 
So plug in two, we'll get four minus two cubed, four minus eight, and plug in one, four, oh no, sorry, not four minus eight, eight minus, Eight minus sixteen. What am I doing? What am I doing here? Eight. Four times two is eight. Two cubed. Eight times two. Eight minus sixteen. When you plug in one, you'll get four. Minus two times one cubed, so minus two. So eight minus sixteen, negative eight minus two, so you get negative ten. Now this negative ten is equal to s of two minus s of one. We're told that the position at time t equals one is seven. So s of one is seven. So s of two minus seven equals negative 10. Adding seven, we then get s of two is just negative three. And so the answer is C. All right, so there you go.